Welcome to class time, CSEC English language. As always, you can watch this lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. And remember, you can use the various social media platforms for questions or comments. We are rounding out the week with a look at informative discourse, writing applications, letters. Today, we focus on the cover letter. I'm Nicola Bailey Blackstock. Let's begin. All right, now today we are looking at writing the application slash cover letter. Now, we need to understand why it is important for us to learn to write the application letter or the cover letter. Now, you are thinking that you're in high school and you have no purpose or reason to be writing the application letter. That is not the case. We have to remember that we are writing for exam purposes, right, and for Informative discourse, which is section B on paper two, we are unaware of what you will get or we will get to write, right, on sec in section B. So we have to prepare you for everything. So writing the application slash cover letter, what is it about? First, we need to look at the lesson objectives, right, what we will accomplish by the end of the lesson, all right? So by the end of the lesson, students should be able to state the definition of the application slash cover letter. Two, give the importance of the application slash cover letter. Identify the part of the application slash cover letter. Outline a sample application slash cover letter. And there should be one more. You should develop competencies in writing by writing an application letter of your own. All right. Now, before we get into the lesson, a little um, work or an activity to get our minds working. All right, so we have a crossword puzzle here, right? So this is the puzzle, and we're going to be looking at the um, items here. So across, right? Number three, what is another name for the salutation? All right, so you would have the puzzle, right? You'll be able to see the puzzle and you will have these questions. You will be able to see them. But because of this, we are not being able to see both all at once. All right, so across, what is another name for the salutation? Can you think of it? Right, if you know the answer, quickly write it down. Six across, what is another name for the application letter? We've been saying it since the lesson began. Think about it and write it down quickly. Seven across, the tone of an application letter should be, right, we have been doing, or you should have, you have been doing the business letter, so you should know what the tone of the business letter or the application letter should be. So quickly write your answer down. All right, so we're looking at down now. All right, down, number one. What do you write when applying for a job? Again, we have been saying it. Write down your answer quickly. Two down, what usually accompanies an application letter? Let me see how, how smart you are and if you've been following. Number four down, what is the name of the first paragraph of the application letter? Quickly write your answer down again. And final one, five down. How many addresses should the application letter have? That is very important. Write your answers down for me quickly. All right, two seconds just to go over everything. And then I will re reveal the answers. All right, moving on. These are the answers. Do you have these answers? Well, if you do, very good. If you don't have all of them, then here they are, and then remember them, and then you won't go wrong again. All right. So we are going to be learning what is an application letter. All right. 
An application letter, also known as a cover letter, is a document sent with your resume to provide additional information on your skills and experience. Now remember, before we began the lesson, I said to you, you might be wondering why is it that you're writing application letters or learning how to write application letters and you're not um, applying for a job? Now what we need to remember is that we not only write application letters for when we are looking for a job, but we are conditioning you for the world of work, yes, but we have to bear in mind that many of you will be seeking scholarships for your tertiary level education. Now, writing an application letter is a part of the process of applying for that scholarship. So you need to learn how to write the application slash cover letter. So an application letter, also known as a cover letter, is a document sent with your resume. Remember that word, resume? to provide additional information on your skills and experience, right? So this is where the prospective employer or the person or persons or the institution that will be granting you the scholarship will get to know who you are before they actually see you in person. All right, the importance of the application slash cover letter. The letter provides detailed information on why you are qualified for the job you are applying for. And bear in mind, it is not just the job, but the scholarship. Bear that in mind, right? So we not only write application letters for finding a job, right? But we may write it for applying for a scholarship, right? Or anything else that we might be applying for, right? Don't, display, don't simply repeat what is on your resume, right? Rather, include specific information on why you're a strong match for the employer's job requirements. All right. Now, yes, you are applying for a job, but bear in mind that you might be applying for a scholarship as well. Include in your cover letter or application letter why it is that you're a suitable candidate for this job or this scholarship. Think of your cover letter as a sales pitch that will market your credentials and help you get the interview. As such, you want to make your cover letter, you want to make sure, sorry, your cover letter makes the best impression on the person who is reviewing it. All right, now think about, say maybe you followed your mother or father um, to the car dealership when they were purchasing a car and the sales representative, right, based on how um, he or she pitched the sale of this particular motor vehicle, it made your mother or your father want to purchase the car, right? The techniques that the sales representative used, right, persuaded your mother or father to purchase the car. This is the same thing that you're going to be doing when you are writing your cover letter or application letter. So you're pitching right, yourself as the suitable or the best person for the scholarship or the job. So you're painting yourself in a beautiful light, right? So when this person picks up the application letter, they are wowed that they immediately say, okay, then this is in the callback pile or the call pile. Right, this person definitely has to get a call for the interview. So you paint yourself in a beautiful light. Not to lie, you know, don't lie, right? But you're going to be using all of the traits, all of the skills that you possess to persuade this prospective employer or scholarship giver to give you the scholarship or the job or to call you for the interview. A cover letter is often your earliest written contact with a potential employer creating a critical first impression. Bear that in mind, critical first impression. So based on the, what you write or you include in the application letter, no doubt that you will get a call back. Now, if your letter is bland, you will not get a call back, right? You have to ensure that your, you express your, 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 your ideas or your skills, right, or your talents in a colorful way, right, to grab 
the attention of the reader, right? So that they are so wowed that you are definitely given an interview. All right, the purpose of the application slash cover letter. Introduce yourself, right? Who are you, right? What is your purpose? Why are you applying for this scholarship or this job? Mention the job or kind of job you're applying for or looking for, right? And remember, bearing in mind that when you keep um, hearing me referring to job, also remember that you, apl yeah, you apply for scholarships and any other thing that is worthy of applying for, right? So ap application letters or cover letters are not just specific for when you're um, looking for a job. Show, your, show that your skills and experience match the skills and experience needed to do the job. Encourage the reader to read your resume. Now, how are you going to at least get the prospective employer or the institution who is giving this scholarship to read your resume? Remember, one important thing that I mentioned earlier, when you're writing your application letter, you are not going to be fibbing. Right? What do I mean by fibbing? You're not going to be lying. You are going to present the factual information in your cover letter. So say, for example, you are excellent at Microsoft Word and Excel. You include that. If you are not good with those, you do not include them. Because say, for example, you're hired for the job and they look at your, your, your application letter and your resume and they, saw, they see that you are good with Microsoft Word and Excel, and they ask you to create a document using either Microsoft Word or Excel, and you're there looking at them, they will know that you lied, right? So you only include the skills that you possess. Do not add or subtract, right? Because if you do that, they will know. All right. How long should the application slash cover letter be? Now, this is very important. Now, when you are applying for a job, the aim is to ensure that you get a call for the interview. Now, it means that you stick to the point. You be specific. You are, the application letter is short, sweet, and to the point, right? Now, you don't want to create a lengthy application letter where the reader is there reading on and on and on, wondering when is this thing going to end? You know what happens? In many cases, they put it aside because they're saying this person is going on and on too much. I can't be bothered, right? What if this prospective employer has, uh, say, 500 persons who applied for one job and you are there with this long application letter, right? No, the um, prospective employer will not want to continue to read because they are saying, that, okay, I have so many to go through. This single one is taking up my time. Yes, you are qualified for the job, but guess what? You are not to the point. The application letter was not short and sweet, right? So remember, short, sweet, and remember to be truthful. All right, so here it says, keep it short. A cover letter is meant to be a summary of your resume, so don't write more than one page, all right? All right, matching your cover letter to the job. What do you mean by that? Mm, all right, so you see the advertisement in the newspaper. You're, they're applying for a computer analyst. And you're applying, and when you are outlining your skills, your skills do not match um, the computer analyst um, position. It doesn't make any sense. Ensure that the job and your skills match. All right? Remember that because they would, more often than none, they want someone who is experienced. So ensure that the job and the skills, they match. All right. So here it says, use a different cover letter for each job you apply for. Right, so say for example, you go through the Sunday Gleaner and you see more than one job that you may be suitable for, right? Do not allow your application letters to be generic where you 
just take out the part where the, um, the, the, the job title is and you just put in the other one. No, don't, don't, don't allow your, your cover letters to be generic. Allow your cover letters to speak for you and to ensure that they match each application or each, each, um, each job that you are applying for. All right. So your cover letter needs to show that you know what the job involves and what the employer is looking for. To do this, be specific about your skills and qualities. You also need to show how they match the needs of the job or the organization. All right, so the prospective employer needs to know that what, what it is that you're bringing to the table. What would you have to offer the organization if you are hired. All right, three simple ways to make your cover letter as specific as possible, right? So remember, we are looking at the fact that your cover letter should be short and sweet, right? Nothing lengthy. So we're going to go through the tips to help you to allow or to facilitate your application letters being short and sweet. All right, number one, Find out who to address it to. Try not to address your letter to, who it may, to whom it may concern. Sorry. Find out the name of the person who will read your application. This might take a little effort, but it's worth it. Now, why do we say it's worth it? Now, if you see the vacancy in the paper or the advertisement in the paper, and by some... Um, by whatever, for, for, for whatever reason, they forget to include who the person is that you should apply or send the application letter to. And you just simply write in your application letter to whom it may concern. Now, when this person opens the letter and looks at it and they see to whom it may concern, it may throw them off a bit. Why do I say that? It means that they're going to Say to themselves, this person did not take the time out to at least call, try to call to find out who this letter should be addressed to. So they would think to themselves that this person did not make an effort, right? So you don't want that to be the first impression that the prospective employer thinks of you, right? Make the effort. Find out to whom you should address the letter. All right, it pays off. All right, if you found the job in an advertisement, it will be probably, it will probably name a person to send the application to. If it doesn't, as I mentioned before, call the employer or advertiser and ask who to send the application to. Telephone is best, but email them if you can't find a contact number. Remember, effort. If you find out the person's name, don't use their first name. Now, why, did we, why would we say do not use their first name? Remember that we need to consider or to, to remember that the business letter or the application letter is a formal document. Now, you need to remember that your prospective employer, you, you are not friends with them, right? So... Be polite and address them by their last name with their title. So it's Mr., Miss, or Mrs. And it would be good to if you could find out, say, for example, it is a female that you are sending the application to, find out whether or not this person is married or not, right? So you don't want it to be a situation where the person is married and you address them as Miss. Some persons might take offense to this, so be very careful. All right. If you find out the person's name, as I mentioned, don't use their first name. Remember, formality, right? It is a formal document that you are writing. So use either Mr. or Miss and their last name instead. Or remember to find out if the lady is married or unmarried. All right, number two, find out more about the job. Now, why do you need to find out more about the job? Now, these are some things that you can include in your cover letter, right? Say, for example, as I mentioned before, it is a computer analyst. Find out what it is that a computer analyst would do, 
right? Find out about the specifics of the job, right? What would the prospective employer want this particular computer analyst to do, right? So you can call them to find out what would be their role, right? And you could include it in your application letter, right? So when finding out who to address your application to, you could also try to contact that person so you can ask questions. This can help you match your cover letter and resume to the job. All right. You could ask, does the job involve working as a team? Who would I be reporting to if I got the job? All right. Now, when we come back, we will continue. It's time for our first of two breaks. Stretch your legs, hydrate, and come right back. Welcome back to class time. If you're just joining us, we've been breaking down the cover letter. So far, we've looked at find out, finding out more about the job. Let's continue. Now, step two, find out more about the job, right? Now, as I mentioned, when you find out more about the job, this tells the prospective employer that you are interested and that you made the effort, right? So if certain things are unclear for you, you, would, you could, as mentioned before, call, right? And we suggest that calling is best, but if you're unable to get a hold of the prospective employer or the organization by phone, you can just simply send them an email, right? So when finding out who to address your application to, you could also try to contact that person so you can ask questions, right? This can help you match your cover letter and resume to the job, right? And this shows, as I mentioned, that you are interested and you made the effort, right? Now, what are some questions that you can ask, right, when you do get a hold of the organization, right? First one, does the job involve working as part of a team, right? And this is not to um, allow the prospective employer to, to deter them from um, anything to say that, okay, then maybe you are standoffish and you don't want to work as a team. No, you want to know how to structure or tailor your application letter. Who would I be reporting to if I got the job, right? And this would be helping you to know who to address the application letter to. Can you tell me more about the kind of person you are looking for, right? So you want to become familiar, what to expect, what to include in the application letter. Remember, you want to be short and sweet, but these are essential things that you need to know. Is there a position description that I can look at? Right. And 
Only ask this if the job advertisement doesn't mention a position description. So if it is already displayed in the advertisement, there's no need to ask, right? Number three, find out more about the company. Now, why would you want to find out more about the company? Now, the prospective employer wants to know that you know about their organization, what they have to offer. And again, this would put you in a good light because they would say, okay, then you took the time out to find out what it is that my organization is about. And also, this does not, does not help you to write the application letter, but finding, more, finding out more about the company will help you in the interview if you are given a call. Right, so there, there, there might be questions that the prospective employer um, might ask, and you want to be prepared. You don't want to be sitting in the interview and you're there. Um, um. So, say for example, they ask you, when was the organization formed, and you don't know. This would throw the panel off completely because you do not know anything about the company. How can you be applying for some for a job to work at an organization and you did not take the time out to find out what the company is about? Why you want to work for a place you don't know anything about? All right. So find out more about the company so you can tailor your cover letter for the job. Here are some tips. If you know the name of the company, look for the information online. And this is something I always pride myself on. Whatever school I am applying for, I always ensure that I go online to check up about or to find out about the history of the school, um, what is the teacher-student ratio, all of these things. These are questions that the, the panel may ask you, so you need to know. And I, as I mentioned before, why would you want to work somewhere that you don't know anything about? All right. Now you also need to know if the company has a web website, visit it, especially their About Us page, right? And this usually tells you everything that you need to know about the organization, all right? If the company name isn't in the advertisement, call the recruitment agency or advertiser and ask who the employer is, right? So you need to be very, very informed. Remember, you know, you're selling yourselves. Yes, it should be short and sweet, but it should grab the prospective employer. Remember, you want a call back, right? So ensure that you dot all your I's and cross all your T's. All right, font and format. Now, these are some things that we need to bear in mind. Now, we are in a, a, a day and age where not many persons write, actually write the application letter with a pen, right? Most um, organizations prefer if you type it. Now, if you're going to be writing your application letter, right, there is usually a standard um, format, format that you use, right? Now, um, you have to consider the, um, the type of writing that you include, right? Or you use when you're writing your application letter. Now, if you're writing your application letter, remember that you want to impress your um, prospective employer. Now, you cannot select a font that the prospective employer will not be able to read. So say, for example, you cannot choose calligraphy. No, right? You are not writing to your friend. Remember, it is a business letter that you're writing. An application letter is a business letter. And you need to bear in mind all the conventions of writing a, a, a business letter or an application letter. Remember, I said to you some time before that the application letter is a formal document. Remember that. So take into consideration all the conventions of writing a formal document. So the font, usually we prefer um, Times Roman, right? No, and for t um, 12, that's a good size, right? All right. Now, there are different ways, right, or formats that you can use to write your application letter, right? But most places, they prefer, as you see, the block format. All right. Now, you may ask, what is the block format? Now, when writing business letters, 
you must pay special attention to the format and font used, as I mentioned before. The most common layout of a business letter is known as block format. Using this format, the entire letter is left justified and single spaced except for a double space between paragraphs. Bear that in mind, please, right? So it is left justified. Now, what do we mean by left justified? And we're going to get to that, right? And remember, it is single spaced except when you are moving on to a next paragraph where you will double space, all right? Now, yes, you, you're not able to see this quite clearly, but I just want you to look at the layout, right? Now, when we say left justified, right, if I was in the actual classroom, I would say keep everything to the left margin. And I should be careful when I say keep everything to the left margin. Now, let me explain. Now, in the application letter, there are usually two addresses. Now, the inside address and the, or sorry, the sender's address, let me correct, the sender's address and the receiver's address. So the sender's address would be your address because you are the one who is sending the application letter to someone. So you are the sender. So you would place your address here at the top, right? That, would, that is where your address will go. Now, below that, right, you would have the date, right and then the name of the person to whom you're applying to their position and the, the name of the organization and the address of the organization so two addresses bear that in mind the sender's address which is you and the receiver's address which is the prospective employer please remember now after that you would have the salutation or the what is the other name for the salutation we did it in the activity before greeting very good right so if you pay attention if you look you will see that so far the two addresses are to the left the salutation or the greeting is also to the left margin right and what else did we say about the using the block format when you're writing the paragraphs, right, each sentence should be single spaced, but you only have a double space when you're moving to a next paragraph. All right. Now, what do we notice? Everything is to the left. If we look here, when we see, look at the closing, right, everything is to the left. That is what it means when we say it is left justified. Everything is on the left, right? The addresses, the two addresses, the salutation, right? And the closing are to the left. Please bear those things in mind. So this is what we mean when we say they are left justified. All right? Understand so far? Are you with me? All right, not a problem. We'll be going through and you'll get your chance to write or practice writing your own letters. All right, now another one is the modified block format. Now, another widely utilized format is known as the modified block format. In this type, the body of the letter and the sender's and recipient's addresses are left justified and single spaced. However, for the date and closing, tap to the center point and begin to write, right? So the date, and the closing would be in the center. All right, so now the final one that we're looking at, the for final format, is the semi-block format. Now, when I was going to school, this is when, this is what we used when we were going to school, but most organizations prefer the semi-block, but you still need to know what the, what different formats look like. All right, so the semi-block. What is the semi-block format? Many of you may not have heard it before, but um, we're going to be looking at it and to get familiar with it. All right, so the final and least used, remember it is the least used. It's, we're not saying that you can't use it, but it's a, it is the least used, right? It is the semi-block. It is much like the modified block style, except that each paragraph is indented instead of left justified. Now, 
I remember when I was going to school and I was learning how to write a letter and we were taught how to indent, right? My teachers used to say, okay, then use your finger and the first joint, put the first joint on the margin and then you would start writing here. That is how I learned about indentation. Now, if you want to do that, you can, but if you want to use your ruler, just say half an inch, you can start half an inch away from the margin, all right? So this is what we mean by indentation, a little away from the margin, all right? All right, so here is a semi-block style letter. All right, now what do we notice? Hmm. When we were looking at the block format, what did we realize? That everything was to the left. What do we see here? Both addresses are not to the left. What, is, what do we realize? That where is the sender's address? The sender's address is here, closer to the right margin. Right, so the sender's address is here, right, closer to the right margin, and then we come back to the left for the send the receiver's address, right? Pay attention. So remember, the semi block and the block they are very different, right? So we have to pay attention, all right? Now, for this, where do we see the closing? Where is the closing? The um, the the complementary closing, where is it? It is beneath the sender's address. Do we see that, right? Now here it says, this is the example of the semi-block format, right? So everything is a bit different in the semi-block. So the, the block format, everything is left justified or to the left margin, right? And the semi-block format, we see where there are few changes where the sender's address and the closing are more to the right margin, right? Do we see that? Now, what do we notice also about the body of the semi-block um, letter, right? There's an indentation. So remember I said to you, you could either use your finger or you can use a ruler, right, to determine half an inch away from the margin. Now, if you look here, you will see that for every paragraph, it begins a little away from the left margin. That is what we mean by indentation or indenting, all right? We start a, a little bit away from the margin, all right? So this is an example of the semi-block format. All right, now, we don't just get up and just write the letter just like that. We need to know the importance of every part of the letter. All right. So the first part of the letter is the header or the heading. A cover letter should begin with the sender's address followed by the date. Right? Many persons, when I mark, our students, when I'm marking their books, I realize that they tend to leave off the date. Please don't leave the date off. It's very important. Next should be the name, job title, name of company, followed by the address. All right, so it should look something like this. All right, so the header should look something like this. And remember, when you're writing the application letter, there should be two addresses. Your address, because you are the sender, and the receiver's address. This is the receiver's address, the company or the organization that you are sending the letter to. Bear that in mind. All right, salutation. As I asked before, what is another name for the salutation? It is the greeting. Very good. Now, begin your cover letter with your salutation. It could be either dear. Mr., Miss, or Mrs. Remember I said that to you? So if you're unsure of the female's title, call and ask or email and ask, right? You don't want to put Miss when the lady is married or put Mrs. when she's not married, all right? So you need to find that out, all right? So if you are unsure of your contact or if your contact is male or female, you can write out their full name. If you do not know the employer's name, simply write, Dear Sir, Madam. This is better than the generic, 
and formal to whom it may concern, right? To, to whom it may concern, I don't like that, right? So I would prefer if you would write, dear sir, madam. All right? Review information on how to choose the right cover letter greeting to select one that works for the job and company you are applying to. The next one, introduction. Begin your introduction by stating what job you are applying for. And before I continue, the introduction would be the very first paragraph in the body of your letter, right? Explain where you heard about the job, particularly if you heard about it from a contact associated with the company, or if you saw the vacancy in the newspaper, right? You would need to include that as well. Briefly mention how your skills and experience match the company and or position. This will give the employer a preview of the rest of your letter. Your goal in the introduction is to get the reader's attention, right? That is the goal. Remember, this, as when we're writing our um, essays, we have the attention grabber. The introduction is where we intend to grab the reader's attention or the prospective employer's attention. The body. In a paragraph or two, explain why you are interested in the job and why you, make an, why you may make an excellent candidate for the position. So what are you doing here? Now remember, I keep saying, be short and sweet. Keep the letter short and sweet. You are going to be selling yourself, right? Pitching yourself, right? So pretend that you're, you're selling an item. How would you get the prospective customer to purchase something from you, right? What techniques would you use? And remember I said to you, don't lie, right? Stick to the facts, right? If you do not know anything about, um, say, using Word or Excel, don't include it, right? So mention specific qualifications listed in the job posting and explain how you meet those qualifications. Do not simply restate your resume, but provide specific examples that demonstrate your abilities. So say, for example, um, you work well in a, in a, on a team right? And what more, most persons tend to do or include in this section is where they might say, oh, I'm honest, I'm hardworking, I'm determined. How would the prospective employer know that? Do they know you? They don't know you, right? Include things that you know that you are capable of doing. Say, for example, you are good at creating um, storyboards or you are good at um, creating websites, write that. Do not include um, your personality traits because the person or the prospective employer does not know you. How are they going to know that you're hardworking unless they see you in action, right? So stick to things that um, paint you in a better light. Or, or not to say that you think that you're, you're hardworking isn't painting yourself in a good light, but stick to things that, um, will, um, that the person can say, okay, then you are good at this. All right. Remember, actions speak louder than words. So don't just tell the reader that you are, for example, a great team player with strong communication skills and an excellent attention to detail. Instead, use tangible examples from your work experience to show these traits in action. All right, here's more information on what to include in the body section of the cover letter. All right, um, let me give you some tips. All right, as I mentioned before, all right, you're a great team player, all right? Instead of you saying that, you can say, I may enhance the, the, um, the company by um, taking initiative, right? That's a, that's a good way to, to sell yourself, right? I take initiative. Don't just simply say, oh, I'm a great team player. No. How the person going to know you're a, good, you're a great team player? Have they seen you in action before? No. So say, okay, then I work well um, in um, tight in in a time short in a time crunch, 
right? Or I space pay specific attention to details, right? So these are things that you can use to um, make your letter sweet. All right. The closing. In the closing section of your letter, of your cover letter, restate how your skills make you a strong fit for the company and our position. If you have room, remember, just like your resume, your cover letter should be no longer than one page. All right. You can also discuss why you would like to work at that specific organization. All right. Now it's time for another quick break. When we return, we'll wrap things up. Be right back. Welcome back to Informative Discourse, Writing Letters of Application. All right, now we're looking at the things that you would include in your letter to make your letters short and sweet. Now remember that we're selling ourselves, right? We are pitching ourselves to our prospective employers, right? No, no, we want to pay to ourselves in the best light. Because remember, we want to be one of those few persons selected for a call for an interview. All right. So and remember that the application letter is the first contact that the prospective employer has with you. Now, what we were looking at, things include in the body, right? Now, continuing state that you would like the opportunity to interview or discuss employment opportunities. Explain what you will do to follow up and when you will do it. Thank the employer for his or her consideration. Now, in this section, this is the last paragraph of the body. Now, I've seen instances where persons write application letters. And in this section, the very last paragraph, it is as if persons are demanding that the prospective employers call them. No. It is the persons or the people's organization. They call you if they feel like calling you. Do not demand a callback. Remember, you are asking, right? So do not make demands on the people. Ensure that you are polite. Bear in mind, as I keep mentioning, that the application letter, along with all other types of business letters, they are formal documents. All right? So don't make any demands on the people them because right then and they're not going to get the work. Right? Remember. All right. Now, the signature. Use a complimentary close and then end your cover letter with your signature, handwritten, followed by your typed name. If this is an email, simply include your typed name followed by your contact information after the complimentary close. Now, what do we mean by complimentary close? Preferably, or we would prefer you to use sincerely, right? Don't use yours truly, right? We would prefer you use sincerely or yours sincerely, all right? And then your application letter is done, right? Short, sweet, and to the point. And if you bear these conventions in mind, 80% of the time, you will get a call back. All right. Now, we're looking at the um, application letter in its entirety, and this is it, right? Now, 
as we mentioned, most organizations prefer you use the block format. And some organizations are specific. They tell you um, how it is that you should structure your um, letter. If they want you to use block format, Times Roman, um, what, what font size. They, some organizations are specific like that, right? Now, here we have the block format. Remember that the block format is left justified, right? Now, in this, this for me, even though this is an example I chose, I think that this is too long, right? This is too much for somebody to read, right? Now, as I mentioned, yes, three paragraphs, but keep them short, right? Because you want a call back, you want the person to hurry up, read it, be wowed, and put you in the pile to be called for an interview. That is what we want. That is the aim. All right. Now, it's time for us to work from home. Now, it is time for us to apply all of what we have learned so far. Remembering that the application letter is a formal document, right? That the tone should be formal, right? Um, using, if you prefer to use the um, block format, we use it, right? How many addresses we should include and so on. Now, we're going to be practicing all of what we learned, right? So it's work from home time. All right, we're going to read the application slash cover letter on the next slide and identify the errors. Now we've gone through all of this, so let us see how many of these errors you can identify. All right, so inside address or the sender's address, Stacy Brown, lot 251, one heaven close, memory village, Old Harbor St. Catherine, August 18, 2016. Receiver's address, Miss Jane Singh, Managing Director, Dear Jane, and then we have the body. Now read it on your own, two seconds, and see how many of the errors you can identify. I have identified so many. All right? First one, the name, right? Why is the name? The person's or the sender's name here. It should not be there. First error. All right. Second error, there should be a line, right, or a space between St. Catherine and the date, right? The next one, Miss Jane Singh, managing director. Manin managing director of where? Where the letter going? No address is there, so where it going go, right? So it going to stay at the post office and don't leave because... There's no address, right? So the address should be there. So that is the third error that we have identified so far. The next one is in the salutation. Dear Jane, you want Jane a friend? Why are you calling the woman by her first name? Wrong. So it should be Dear Miss Singh, right? All right. Now, here is the body. Now, how many paragraphs did I say? Or, or did I suggest that the paragraph should have? Now, looking at it, I am seeing that there is no introduction, right? I am not seeing um, if, you, if you saw or if, where did you find the letter, right? Or where did you see the advertisement, right? Um, also, the other paragraph or the second paragraph, so this would be, yes, the introduction, but it's, it's kind of a little bit lacking. But the second paragraph where you would um, sell yourself, pitch yourself, I'm not seeing that paragraph. That is the second or the, another error that we have identified in this um, letter, right? And then another error that I have found, I'm hoping that you are finding these errors as well. Why is it this closing right there? Why is it there? Oh, why, why is the, 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 the closing of the letter right there, right? No, it should not be there. Remember the block format, it should be left justified. Now, that's all for today. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN at 5 p.m. And remember, the School Time Channel 24-hour learning on One Spot Media. Join us tomorrow when we'll turn our attention to the resume. Until then, keep safe.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.